In 2 Peter chapter 1 here, he said, uh, Simon Peter, a servant. And we need to always remember that's what we are. Uh, you know, I, I tell people, I said, I've never really been impressed with nobody much. Uh, I learned a long time ago that Psalm 39, 5 said, a man in his best state is altogether vanity. Uh, the best of men are men at best. And no matter what they're the best at, uh, eventually they're going to move off this planet and they're fallible man just like anybody else. But Peter... Uh, as great as he was, he said, I'm a servant. Right. And if your, Bi if your Bible bears uh, two books with his name on it, and he considered himself a servant, yep. then why, why shouldn't we consider ourselves? I mean, Jesus put it this way. He said, he come not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Right. Right. He said, I didn't come here for you to wait on me. I come here to wait on you. And uh, he said, look, there's a lot of people in trouble today. You know what we need? We need some servants. The Lord's looking for laborers. He's not looking for leaders. Amen? He makes leaders out of laborers, but he just looks for somebody to put their hand to the plow and don't look back and don't need a slap on the back because I'm telling you, some days I like a slap on the back, but some days we just don't get them. Amen? But he's got to march on anyway. But he said, uh, Simon Peter's servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, and that is why you are righteous through him. Yeah. And uh, he said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity and there's only one person in this room that can add all that stuff to your faith and that's you yeah. amen amen he said, into, he said in verse 8, For if these things be in you, what an amazing promise this is right here. Yeah. And abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Let me say this real fast. If you don't add these things to your faith, he said, you can get so far that you can be saved and not know it's the way I read that. Amen. So it's, it's vitally important that you uh, get these things uh, going in your life and, and work on them every day because it does have some uh, assurances with it. Amen. He said, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. The greatest reason to put all of them in your life that's a promise from God that if you do that, he said, you shall never fall. You may stumble, but look here, you're not going to fall. You may uh, waver a little bit, but you're not going to fall. You're always going to be here. Look here, I come to church a lot of times when I'm cold or hot, but I come. Amen? And that's what you need to do. Some days you get up and you want to serve God, and some days you don't. But you know what you do? You just get up and do it. Amen? But anyhow, he said, For so is an entrance, uh, he said, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must, uh, I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Father, I pray you'd help us today to help the hearers. I pray, Lord, for the ones in this building, Lord, through, uh, through the media that you uh, provided. Uh, Lord, whoever might listen to this, that uh, it would stir their hearts, it would fall on good ground, it would bring forth fruit, some 30, 60, and 100. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us to honor you, edify your body, and exalt your precious name today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to try to preach real quick here uh, on this subject, if I could, on the things that we absolutely need to remember. There's some things that we don't need to forget. 
Uh, it's been, I guess, 21 uh, years ago, something like that, maybe 22 if my math's right. I, I, uh, but uh, when the Twin Towers fell, there was, uh, I think, uh, over 3,000 Americans lost their life. And, uh, you know, people should never forget what happened on that day. And I remember back then, I remember exactly where I was at, and uh, I remember what was going on, and I remember what started happening around a bunch of churches then, too. Uh, churches were filled to the brim. People were scared to death. Uh, they, they thought that uh, we was going to be invaded or whatever they had on their mind, that America was no longer going to be the place that it was. And uh, so we went through all that. And, uh, but, you know, a lot of those people that feel those churches that day, they don't even give it a second thought today. Right. And, uh, but there's some things that should never be forgotten, and it's that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Lord tells us to remember some things. He tells us to not forget certain things. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8, he said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, God said there's a day that we ought to set aside, and that was the covenant between God and Israel. And, uh, of course, in the New Testament, you and I, we meet on the first day of the week. And uh, they clarified that, I believe, in Romans 14 when he talked about doubtful disputations. Uh, you know, he talked about dots and days. And, and uh, some of them said, well, you know, you ought to worship on Saturday. Some said Sunday because we do it as a celebration of the resurrection. And uh, then uh, some of them said, well, you need to be fully persuaded. If you want to worship on Saturday, I'm okay with that. But don't tell me I'm going to hell because I worship on Sunday. Amen. We ought to give God every day. But uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16 said, Let no man judge you concerning those days. And uh, those diets and different things. They had a lot of things going on early in the church. But he said, you ought to remember a day. You ought to set a day aside when you just meet at my house and you fellowship and you worship me. Right. I think that's okay. Amen. And uh, look here, we shouldn't come to get out. We should come to get in and see what God's got for us because this could be the most important day of your life. If you're not saved, you're in the right place, and this could be the day that you get saved. If you're not settled, this, uh, this could be the day that you get settled and get some assurance on some things. So it's always good to be at the house of God. Uh, he tells the young people in here, and there's a lot of them, amen. He tells them in uh, Ecclesiastes 12, he said, Do you remember? the creator in the days of your youth. Now look, God uses old people. He uses them all the time. Amen. But you know what the Lord wants to do? He wants to use you your whole life. Not just part of it. If he can get the biggest part of it, that's a great thing. Uh, I've been preaching most of my life. I got saved when I was 18, and I done had my crawl full of all that out there. And while the young people in the church had been raised and it was running over me to get out the door, I was running through them trying to get in the door. Amen? And it's been good. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, serving God in your youth will save you a lot of trouble. Uh, he told him in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, Paul speaking to Timothy, he said, Yea, and all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's a promise uh, not a lot of people claim. But he said, Evil men seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. We live in that time. That's nothing new, but uh, we still live in that time but he told Timothy he said but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to, uh, to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus he said you remember what you were taught when you was a child you don't need to be carried around with every wind of doctrine. Amen. What you need to do with your children, uh, you need to tell them them things when they're just real little. I used to read the Bible to Vicky's belly. I would read the Bible to Rep when he was in a cradle. We had pictures on her wall, signs in her yard. We kept him around preachers and, and uh, godly people all the time. And uh, we taught him them truths. We used veggie tales and uh, little Bible stories 
the felt things just anything to put the Bible in him. Amen. He got saved when he was 8, 10, 12, and 14, and I shouted every time. Amen. But look here. He got saved when he was 14, and he said, look, Dad. He said, that's when I got it. There's things that are, well, we taught him when he was a little boy. He said, I can't change, Dad, because I know it's the truth. Amen. And he said, you continue in them. Look, church will change, but truth does not change. Right. And you stay with those things that you've been taught. And uh, he also reminds us to remember Lot's wife. In uh, Luke 17, 32, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. There's a danger to looking back. There's a lot of people that used to come in and they used to worship and they used to do a lot of things. Amen. And a lot of those people, they, for whatever reason, left the church. I, I talk to young men all the time and said, I wish I could go back to church and just sit in church with my parents like I used to when I was a little boy. Some of them doing 20 and 30 years and uh, that, that's not a good thing. But they're there, and I try to be a blessing and a help to them. But you've got to realize the treasure that you've got here. Right. Now, I know some of you, just like me, some days you think about quitting, but then you think there's nothing else I'd rather do. Amen? And you hang in here. There's some days you might even have good reason to quit, but you just hang in here, and you keep coming anyway. Amen? And uh, he said, remember Lot's wife. When Lot's uh, wife looked back, everything she had, was down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. Everything they owned. They had son-in-laws down there, but if you'll read your Bible in Genesis 19, 12, they had sons down there. Now I'm telling you, sons had become sodomites and uh, her heart was broke and she looked back and she said, everything I ever was, everything I ever had, my blood is down there, my boys are down there. And to have that mother in her just could not keep from looking back. I don't want to throw stones at it, but I'm telling you, there's a danger about looking back. Matter of fact, you may make it back, but your children may not. So you need to hang in here. Amen. But anyway, uh, the Bible talks a lot about remembering things. I don't know about you, but I have to read and reread my Bible because I forget stuff. I have to refresh myself on Bible doctrines that I've known for years because sometimes if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. Hebrews 2, 1 said, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Just because you learned it, uh, look, if you just kind of tuck it away way back and you just use it on occasion and then you think, well, I don't need that no more, it's on the shelf, but look, it's way back there and it's hard to find sometimes and it just don't come out like it used to. Amen? So you, know, you need to be careful about that. And look, uh, that's what God always told those people uh, getting ready to go into the promised land. He said, you need to remember, uh, you need to remember some things. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9, just going to say this real fast, uh, they was getting ready to go over into the promised land, and he said, Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. And let me say this, if we keep up with ourselves like we keep up with everybody else, we'd be a whole lot tighter. Amen? I tell people all the time the world would be perfect if we all change problems because I know what you need to do and you know what I need to do. So, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But he said, keep up with yourself. He said, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. He said, look, don't forget what you saw. He said, don't forget what you've seen in the desert. Don't forget that I, I rained a train load of food. Don't forget that I opened up the Red Sea. Don't forget I drowned that army. Don't forget that I gave you victory over all these enemies and I brought water out of a rock. He said, don't forget none of that stuff. Look, some of you folks just need to remember what God has already done. He's done some great things for everybody in here. And he said, you just need to remember, amen, what God has already done. And I'm going to preach to you today about stuff you already know. But he said, you know what? You need to tell your sons what God's done for you. 
If you're going to share your testimony, and share it with your children. Amen. Tell them how good God is. Just don't sing about it, but just tell them about them times when it was tough and God came through when you thought the world was going to collapse around you, but God came through. You remind them of them stories. Amen. Because we all forget, but Doug, when you get that little baby, you start telling them stories and that about how God done all that. You mothers and fathers in here, you grandparents in here, you tell them how faithful God has been through every bit of it. Thank God Almighty. I've got some stories to tell. Amen. Well, I just sometimes let us stop and say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name because I not only know what God can do, I know what God has done. And I say, Praise the Lord, I am what I am because God done what he's done. Amen. But look here, you need to tell them to your grandchildren. He told them government leaders, when you go into the promised land, you do this. And God knows our government, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, they need to do this. Deuteronomy 17, 19, it shall be with him, talking about their king, their leader, and he shall read therein all the days of his life that copy of the word of God that they said he should have. Wouldn't it be a blessing if Joe Biden got up every day and read his Bible? Wouldn't that be a blessing? He said that he may learn to fear the Lord. He learned some things from reading it. He'd say, look, I might be the president, but you know what? I'm not all powerful. I know somebody that is, and I need to fear him. Amen. He said in his God, I fear his Lord and his God to keep the words of this law and the statutes to do them. Not only fear God, but he reads something in the Bible, and he said, I need to do this myself. He said, I need to encourage my people to do this myself. You read the Bible as the government goes, so goes the governed. All the bad kings in the Bible let them down bad roads. All the good kings let them down the good road. You know why? Because they remembered what God Almighty in heaven said. We need to remember some things. Amen. Amen. But anyhow, let me move on here. He said, I'm going to remind you of these things, and I'm not going to be negligent to do them. We need to remind people what they already know. Amen. A lot of preachers trying to preach something and nobody else has preached, forget it. Amen. He said, though you be settled in them, in verse number 12. You know, when you're settled in something, it's kind of like that anchor he was talking about in Sunday school. It's tuck root. He said, though you know them. There's a lot of things I know about. There's some things I know. John 8, 32 said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I believe the truth, but I know the truth. Amen. Amen. And he said, And be established in the present truth. He said, I'm going to remind you of these things. Right. You know why? He said, Because they stir you up. Sure. They stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That means cause you to move. Yeah. That's what truth does. It causes you to move. You know why there's that jail preaching this morning? Because there's men and women in that jail that's lost that need to be saved. There's men and women in that jail that's backslid on God that need to be reminded, hey, he ain't done with you yet. This ain't going to last forever. You're going to walk out that gate, and you need to get busy for God and make his place a distant memory. Hey, they're down there preaching the word of God in these churches all across this country. Men of God standing up and preaching and reminding them people of the truths this day that they should never forget so they'll be stirred up and serve God Almighty faithfully till they see him face to face. Amen. Amen. But let me give you three quick things here. We should never forget the promises of God. Amen. Matter of fact, he said here in verse number four that they're exceeding great and precious promises. Everything you need to know that's going to help you through the day you're going to find in this Bible. I challenge people all the time. I've had pe preachers get up behind me in, in, in meetings and rebuke me for doing this, but I'm going to do it again anyhow. 
I said, if you're a bad reader, read one chapter of the New Testament a day. And if you'll do that every day, way less than a year, you'll read the New Testament all the way through and have a whole lot of time left. And I promise you, it will change your life dramatically. If you ain't interested in spending five or ten minutes in your spiritual life, this preacher, this church, God himself can't help you none. Amen? But I'll guarantee you do that, and it'll be a blessing to you. Amen? But look here, he said, they're exceeding great and precious promises, and it makes us partakers of the divine nature. Now, God, look here. I believe that when we read our Bibles, it brings out the best in us. I've got some worse in me, but when I read my Bible, it brings out the best in me. When I read it more, it brings out the best of me more often. Right. Amen. And look here, reading your Bible is, I believe this, necessary for you to stay close to God. Right. Yeah, I ain't complicating things. I'm just telling you, we need to stay close to God, and you do that by letting God talk to you. Amen. 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 When you memorize and meditate on this, uh, these precious promises that he gave us and it's about this precious faith that we have. He said it gives us more grace and it gives us more peace. You know what people need? They need somebody to back up and give them a truckload of grace. Amen. There's some folks that's struggling, are stumbling and struggling and they just need you to be patient with them and bring them along. There's some people I know they have no grace, no tolerance for nothing. They think when you get saved today yeah, instead of being a babe in Christ you ought to be an elder in the faith it just don't work that way but I'm telling you thank God we need a busload of peace too in a world that's going crazy in a world where people's worried about everything you can imagine I've got peace people said preacher what is going to happen to the world I said according to the Bible it's going to burn baby but you know what I ain't going to be here I'm going to be in another country I'm going to be in another place I ain't worried about saving in the planet. I'm going to use it all up as much as I need to and I'm leaving here. Amen. I don't know what's going to go on in Ukraine or Russia. Oh, look, we spent enough, spent enough money. We shouldn't have to worry about all that. Right, right. Amen. But I know this. I don't know about inflation. Right. I ain't got a 401k. But I know when gas is $5 a gallon, I had it. I know when food prices went up, my cabinets are still full because he owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. When I thought I couldn't make it, when I've been sick enough to die, he gave me peace to know that passes all understanding that I'm going to go to heaven and no matter what happens, I got some peace today. But anyhow, amen. Everything pertains to life and godliness right here in this book. Right. You want your house to run good? Run it like the Bible said. Amen. Amen. If you don't, it's like a six-cylinder car. It'll run on four, but not like it ought to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. You want your money to go further, spend it like the Bible said, and you'll be good. Amen. If you don't, it won't. That's all I know. And I failed math uh, miserably in school. I made a D in high school math. I ain't proud of that. I'm just saying. Amen. But look here. Uh, you want people to treat you better? Then you do what the Bible said. You treat better. You show them mercy and you show them grace. And if you have friends, you must show yourself friendly. Everything pertains to life and godliness. You will know how you ought to talk and how you ought to dress and where you ought to go and who you ought to go with. Just read your Bible and God will let you know about all that stuff. But anyhow, let me move on here. Look here. When we read our Bibles... And memorize these scriptures. It helps us keep sin out of our lives. And everybody in this room, myself included, gets that in you. You ever get that on you? Amen. Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you ever start to do something, you really want to do it, then there's a Bible verse pops in your head. It says, I want to do that. I'm thinking about doing that. I might even do that. You take two steps toward it, and that verse just gets louder. Right. You know what that is? That's God saying, don't do it. You know better. I told you so, and you keep that sin out of your life. It don't mean you're weak. It means you're strong. It makes you an overcomer, not a failure. It helps you to walk the right path of life. 
You ever seen them Christians that you admire and you think, I'd like to be like that? You're tired of your Christian life being dull and boring? I have some water, I want to say. Nah, just kidding. That's what they do on TV. You buy it by the truckload. Amen. If I've read my Bible enough to know what he told Joshua. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You want a prosperous Christian life and have a successful Christian life, and you want God's hand on your life, and you want to feel the power of God on your life, and you want to feel the victory that some of these people talk about, then you just get in that book and you meditate on that book. Second Timothy 3, 16, all Scripture has given me inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. You read your Bible, and God will tell you every nook and cranny you need to live in and walk in. But anyhow, let me move on here. Amen. Sometimes somebody's going to ask you something, and you ain't, the preacher ain't going to be nowhere around. You know why you need to learn truth? I get the privilege of preaching in this church. I preached for Doug and when he had a handful and now he's got a house full. He ain't forgotten. That's good. I appreciate that. Look here, I preach in church. I was preaching at a pretty good size camp meeting one time. And I mentioned about this little church in the mountains of Virginia, Razor Ridge Baptist Church. Probably my most favorite place in the world to preach. This is a real close second here. I go up there. And uh, those people look at you like pictures on a the wall. They don't blink. They don't breathe. They don't do nothing. But it's this little mountain church. Gravel roads back to it. I go in there. Their choir really ain't that good. I don't think they got YouTube up there, so I hope they ain't listen to this. <laughs> but they sing with the joy of the Lord in their heart. Amen. Amen. And I get up and I preach, and there's only about 10 to 15 of them there. I preach revival for them. We have a great time up there. And I'm just telling you, I, I mentioned that. And I preach in other small places. And I preach in small prison services sometimes. And, and this preacher came up to me and he said, Why? He said, How do you preach in those little churches? I said, Just like I do in the big ones. Amen. I said, Those people go to family reunions. They, they've got children. They've got grandchildren. They go to work. And they go to school. And they've got to know the truth so they can tell the truth. Amen. It goes beyond that little building just like it does here, 1 Peter 3, 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You may not be able to answer all the questions about prophecy, but look, your opinion is as good as anybody else's on that. But I can tell you, you need to learn why you're saved and you need to learn how to get saved so you can tell somebody else how to get saved. But anyhow, let me move on. He said, if you add these seven things to your faith, he said, you wouldn't be barren and run fruit for them. wouldn't fall and it's 12 after I got hurt. You should never forget them promises. You should, your Bible ought to be your best friend. I never read the Bible before I got saved. I was influenced by it, but I never knew nothing about it. I was influenced by church, though I only went a handful of times as a kid. I told him I was a heathen when I got saved. But I said, after I got saved, I started reading my Bible. You're saved by the grace of God. You're conformed to the image of Christ by the Word of God. Amen. But anyway, we never should get to people who helped us to be what we are, where we are. Can I tell you, well, there's a lot of folks... They act like they're the greatest blessing in the world to the church. When I train missionaries, I tell them, say, look, you need to remember something. Those people, you owe them far more than they owe you. Right. Amen. Yes. I owe the church far more yes. than I could ever pay it. Right. It, it has been such a blessing in my life. Yes. The people in the church. Yes. And there's a lot of people in this church. 
I would start naming all of you, but I forget all of you. Your names. I don't even I introduce myself to me some days. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I see your faces and I watch your kids, like I said, grow up in this church. And now some of you's got your grandchildren here, and that is so it's a generational church. That's a good thing. Amen. 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 But look here in Philippians chapter one and verse one. Paul said that uh, to, to Paul and to Moses, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now you think about that. Now there's a, I've met a lot of people over the years. And look, I know we say, I don't care what they think, but, but I know uh, that you don't mean that to the point of, I don't care what nobody thinks no matter what. Because I do know, I do uh, concern myself with what they think about a lot of stuff. Right. Right. But it's not going to change the most important things in my life. But look, if, if you praise me, that's good. If you criticize me, that's okay. Because I don't pay no attention to either one of them much. Right. Amen. Amen. But I do know this. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Sometimes I'm driving down the road and I'll think about all the preachers I've known that have been so good to me and uh, their churches and their families that I've become friends with and a fellowship with and uh, they prayed for me and, and I've introduced myself to people and I said, I'm Larry Seals. They said, oh, I know who you are. I pray for you and your family every day and I think, praise God that somebody's praying for my family. I hope that when most people think about me, the ones that I know that they're just like Paul was, they have good thoughts of me and say, hey, he's a blessing, he's a help, he's an encouragement. I always want to remember that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I've got old doing this, or older, I'm not old, I'm just older. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, I, I, I'm like this in 2 Timothy chapter 1. and verse 4, Paul told Timothy, he said, I'm greatly desiring to see thee. He said, I'm mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. He said, I know you're crying about something. But he said, I'm desiring to see you. Doug texted me this week, and he said, I got you standing here, great place. I've slept in my car when I first started this thing, son. I wasn't sleeping in my car this week. It's all good. <laughs> Amen. It's all good. It's in a big old room. Look like a little apartment. I thank you all so much. But can I tell you, he said, looking forward to the meeting. I don't know what y'all are going to do every Sunday before Christmas, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm coming up here and preaching here or back there, but I'm preaching. Amen. I'm preaching here. There's some place I'm coming back to. But look here, friend. He said, I greatly desire to see you. He said in verse 5, I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which has dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Do you know when Lois and Eunice, well, they had Timothy sitting on their lap and they was teaching him about the Old Testament truths, about, you know, the widow with her barrel and Elijah and Elias and all their miracles. They never dreamed in their life. That little boy sitting on their lap would have two books of the Bible named after him that he would follow one of the greatest evangelists around and become one of the greatest preachers that ever lived. And that's why I tell mothers and grandmothers just tell it and tell it and tell it. Don't let them forget it. Amen. Amen. Some of the greatest people you'll ever meet. They wasn't trained at a seminary. They was trained at their grandmother's knee. They are trained when their mama was singing to them. Yeah. Now, my son, he's 27. And he knows almost all my old friends, the ones that's still alive. They, they still, uh, I see them out in town, they're my old friends, but they're still my friends. Yeah. They start telling some old tales when he was just a little fella. And he'd look up to me and I'd say, he don't know that guy. I said, all he's ever known is a preaching daddy and a praying mama. That's all he's ever known. 
When I was out trying to win somebody else's kids, my wife sitting right back there was hauling my boy to Sunday school and teaching him the Bible and you getting him off uh, uh, to Sunday school. I was out trying to raise money to do the prison work. And look here, friend, God, he ain't forgot about all that. Look here, friend, when people think about me, I want them to think that I am profitable to the ministry like Mark was. I don't want to be a hindrance. I want to be a blessing to the work of God. Amen. He never forgot Barnabas. When nobody else would take him in, the church was terrified of him. He said, I've heard this guy preach. You need to hear him preach. He's got some. He ain't the same guy. Amen. When people think about me, I want them to think of me like they do Gaius, the well-beloved Gaius. Amen. Hey, some folks you think about, man, I really love that guy. He's such a blessing. I love that lady and that, that family. They're good. But, oh, Demetrius, wouldn't it be good to be like him? Yeah. No matter where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. It don't matter if it's a sinner or a saint talking about you. They say, that's a good man right there. Yeah. Look, there's people say stuff to me sometimes. There's a guy down in our prison. They just call him country. No country. He, he, he ain't no soft fellow. He's been in prison for years. He's done a terrible, terrible crime. I don't even think, uh, he probably ain't even saved. But I was walking up the sidewalk to one of them units the other day, and he told one of them old boys sitting in his cell, he said, that's a good man right there. Now, I ain't tooting my own horn, I'm just telling you what he said. Look here, that's a blessing to me, amen? Now, look here, the reason I've been up here for 20-something years, he, I don't know if he feels sorry for me or likes my preaching, but either way, you're going to get it, amen? But look here, I, that's how it is. He brought him up here. I'll never forget some things in my life. I'll never forget that uh, my mother, when she got saved the old-fashioned way, she had 12 kids, nine of us home at one time, and uh, she'd, tell you, she'd be the first to tell you she wasn't mother of the year, but I remember she went off to church and she got right with God. I I guarantee you this son she walked back through that door she is a different soul amen and God just started picking us off one at a time I'll never forget the old country preacher the day I got saved that old long haired redneck coming in there just to look at girls and he just got to preaching the word of God he'd hack and he'd spit and he'd holler he'd scream and he'd let you know hey Jesus loves you just like y'all and he'll save you today if you'll let him save you I've never forgot them people Amen. Never forgot that day. Amen. 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 Look here, I've never forgot, like I said, the pastors and my wife and all these people. Yeah. But let me finish here. It's 20 after. Look, I've never forgot the price paid for my sin. Amen. You should never forget that. Right. Is that table saying remembrance me on it? Yeah. I remember when I first got saved, I used to look at that and I think, why did they write that on that nice table? I never could understand it. And then somebody that preached about the Last Supper. And Jesus said, this is my body. This bread is my body. He said, I'm breaking it for you. It don't turn into the very body of Christ. It was an illustration. He said, this bread is my body and I'm breaking it. Ain't that good? He said, this unfermented grape juice. He said, look, this fruit of the vine is a type of my blood that I shed for you. I'm telling you something. He told me, he said, you fellas do this every time you do this. He said, you do it in remembrance of me. I was so glad when I learned what that meant. I got saved in old church that just come out of the primitive Baptist. We had the last supper and a foot washing. I still like foot washings. I know all them truths about the Old and New Testament, but I still like good foot washings. Amen. And we had foot washings. But he said, you do this and remember to me. I've never forgot who I was, where I was headed. I know who I am, and I know where I'm going to wind up. I told him he found me in the middle of nothing, and he dropped me off in the middle of everything. What a blessing.
blessing. Amen. I think I might just shout a little bit right here. Amen. He said, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sin. I remember when I was unlovable. I remember when he said, for a good man, some would dare to die. He said, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Every once in a while, I just like to tell the story about what God done. I ain't never forgot. I ain't never forgot. Oh, no. Oh, no, I've never forgot. Never forgot that. Hey, at the worst, I ought to have been in prison. <laughs> hey, look, at the least, I ought to be in prison. At the worst, I ought to be in hell. But thank God Almighty, I'm not in either one of them. I'm in the house of God, preaching the word of God with the people of God. What a blessing it is from God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my. He said, but you're washed. Remember the day you got all cleaned up? Yeah. <laughs> he said, but you're sanctified. Yeah. You need to learn what all them mean. Yeah, right. i make you shout too. <laughs> you're justified yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus yeah. and by the Spirit of our God. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. You should never, ever forget that. Right. Okay, I'm a preacher. I always wanted to do it. But I'm a preacher by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Can I tell you, I am where I'm at because of the grace of God. I never dreamed in a thousand years that day when I went to that altar, look, two weeks removed from going to jail, came in that building going to hell, left going to heaven. <laughs> Went down a sinner, didn't know it, but I come up a saint. Right. Went down a sinner, became a son. Yeah. Never forgot that. Right. You need to never forget that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful time of the year when the world is speaking about our Savior. The Lord help me to see beyond that manger. The Lord help me to see that you came to save their people from their sin. Uh, Lord, thank you so much. Never let us forget the whole reason that you came to this earth. We love you in Jesus' name. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.